and Yon from, from Washington, Washington DC. We're Madison and Ivan, and today's Mad Venture is exploring Washington DC's Koreatown. Washington DC area houses the third largest Korean community in the United States. Over a hundred thousand uh, people of Korean descent live in this area. In this. Annandale town alone, there are around a thousand Korean-owned businesses. So we are so excited to take a big bite of all of the delicious Korean culture that you can find here in Northern Virginia in Annandale, just a little outside of Washington, D.C. As always, we are starving. So we are getting started at Saru Juke Story, where we are trying juke for the very first time. All of these types of juke, what do you think? That's the ginseng chicken. Yeah, and it's the most expensive, which is a good sign. <laughs> okay, we can go for it. Okay, add a cart. While we wait for our food, we're exploring their market where they have all sorts of homemade deliciousness from kimchi to dumplings to kimbap. This is definitely good for sharing. This looks so cool. Look at it. Ah, oh, this looks so perfect for the day we're having today. Yeah, it's really. Real cloudy, drizzly. Juke is a type of kanji, and the most basic description of that is a rice porridge. But when you start adding in other ingredients, mm. things get pretty exciting fast. Mm -hmm. Here they have a great variety from pumpkin to bulgogi octopus, but what we heard great things about is their chicken ginseng. It was a comfort food, definitely. It's like um, the chicken noodle soup. It's very mild flavor. Like hearty. Like that's not it's not a liquidy soup. And this is so cute the way they served it too, so decorative. Like a rich flavor for a chicken soup. A little bit of like a good acidity sourness. Is this the ginseng you think? I don't know. I think it's an apple. That's what I thought it was. It looks like an apple. Okay. Because <laughs> there's a sweetness to it. I really like it though. It's definitely, you know, you're sick, you're stuck in bed. This is what you're getting served. It's a nice, feel good food. Yeah, I'm glad we shared. <laughs> yeah. She's got a piece of the ginseng, mm. like a solid chunk of it. It does add that kind of like gingery flavor. Tell us your juke story. Well, today I had juke for the first time and it was perfect rainy day sore throat food. That's a great juke story. <laughs> the next chapter of our story is dessert. We're headed to Breeze Bakery Cafe. Pounds and pounds of pastries. Got fresh cream castella, okay? And it. Heft. And you think this little guy also got some heft? This one is a pumpkin manji. So pumpkin filling inside. And then we have a taro bubble tea. Not strictly Korean, but it's been far too long, so we had to get it. Taro is basically a purple sweet potato. Very delicious. The pumpkin manju. Outside's got some flour. Also, interestingly, like buckwheat, I hear. So, a little almond for decoration. I'm gonna have a bite. That's good. I totally get where manju, similarly named to mandu, which stands for, for dumpling. I can see where the, the similarities could be drawn. The filling, very moist, the dense filling, the dense pumpkin filling, and then the bread just falls apart. Light sweetness in that bread, I really like it. 
and that's one of my favorite things about uh, Asian pastries, is that the, the sweetness is so light and, and like it, it's really about like the freshness of the ingredients and the flavors. Now I also understand why it's so heavy. That cream is dense, dense, dense. I love that combination of textures. That's really nice. It is like a, it's like a little sweet dumpling. A really good level of sweet where you can have the. It doesn't have to be a dessert. It can be like a snack. Traditionally, I read that it's a more of a bean paste inside, but I think the pumpkin was a good choice. We are moving on to the fresh cream costello. Also a, a very heavy pastry and a very popular one. This was the last one. Ooh, soft. Yes. Look at that. Spongy. Reminds me of my family's uh, Christmas cake, just by the, the texture of it, like that pound cake, but not the dense kind, light, airy, but still got weight. You can tell the yellowness, good amount of eggs in there, butter. Nice sweet glaze on the top, but this bread itself, so, so, so light on the sweet. Excellent, because what really shines through in there is that butter, that, that egg, the cream in there really shines because you're not getting hit in the face with all that sweetness. Very mild. I really like this one. I did not think I was gonna eat that entire piece that I broke off. It was like a good, well-made cake, perfect texture, nice and moist. I even ate more of this pastry while he was videoing. <laughs> Korea is known for its skincare, so we are at Tony Moly to get some shopping in. There are so many cute products here, including an entire wall of face masks of every variety you could possibly think of, from broccoli to caviar to snail to tomato and so much oh, more. That's so cute. And thank goodness we already got our juke in because the sun is coming out. It's too beautiful of a day for juke now. We went to Tony Moly and got this i've actually always wanted to get a snail mask i've read that it has all sorts of amazing properties for your skin and i have not ever found one that doesn't have like whitening and like I, my face is too pale already you know it's gonna be good when the entire back of the mask is written entirely in korean i just like the idea of putting snails on your face wonder how many snails made this I wonder how they get this from the snails. Do they just get the goopy stuff? Yeah, do they just like have them? little like snails <laughs> working like all day? Yeah. There are so many Korean businesses here hair salons, pharmacies, clothing stores, but we're going to thingamajigs filled with all things pop culture. So many cute things here. All things K-pop, Pokemon, the cutest school supplies, and even Hershey's Kisses eyeshadow. Outside, there are five different newspapers written in Korean and thick phone books listing Korean businesses in DC. And speaking of Korean businesses, it's dinner time. So now we are here at Chung Hwa Won. <laughs> um, I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly and I'm sorry. She's um, trying her best. <laughs> so this is, if you guys know, one of the most famous chefs in America, uh, David Chang. He has the show Ugly Delicious on Netflix, if you've seen it, but also he's Michelin recognized, he's James Beard Award recognized, he's won like every chef Bobo thing Fuku, ever. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He grew up right around here. 
and his parents had immigrated from Korea and this restaurant is a place where his parents would always take him growing up. He said he loves it so much but he's actually never seen the menu for this restaurant because his dad always knew just what to order. <laughs> so we're gonna go try the noodle dish that is David Chang's dad approved. Um, I mean he turned into an amazing chef growing up on this delicious noodle dish so uh, maybe this will make us better chefs too. Yeah, no. That's, that's the I'm, goal. I'm here to find out. <laughs> <laughs> So we ordered the David Chang's family favorite, Jajang Mayun, which is noodles, diced pork, vegetables, and peanut oil in a black bean curd sauce. I even ordered the Samsung Jiambung, which is noodles with shrimp, squid, scallops, mussels, and vegetables in a spicy pepper soup. We've never had either of these dishes before, and we're big fans of Korean food, so this is all quite exciting. I read that this is kind of like a Korean and Chinese dish together so it's gonna be really cool I'm so pumped to like be exploring more of one of our favorite cuisines today no doubt is slurping noodle so saucy oh man this is like drunk food right here like <laughs> so good the noodles is like perfect al dente like, it, it's like gummy, but still has a bit of resistance to it. And then the, the sauce, just there's so much sauce, it just like mixes all over. But it's just like, it's got that like saucy goodness, like you can just get into a bowl of this. This is really good. I guess too, like the black beans, so the sauce itself is made with black beans and a lot of spice and flavor. And it's just so rich. These noodles are insane. They just, you can tell they're like freshly cooked. The texture is perfect. It has kind of like a solid, like caramelized onion flavor to it. And like, you know, you know how caramelized onions are so just like rich and just, that's what this is. It's like perfectly rich. Like, yeah, I, Ivan was bringing up, it almost has like a little bit of a French flavor that you get from some of their sauces. Like, it's just so nice. And it has a little, like, it's not spicy, but like, this spice is just perfectly flavored. Mm. Got this red, um, like, spicy broth, seafood broth, shrimp, two types of shrimp, a uh, piece of squid in there, scallops as well, and mussels. Do your glasses walk up? Oh my god. Yeah, it's, it's hot. <laughs> but same great noodles. I think that's the, the highlight of all of this. Like the carbohydrate is just so well done. Noodles just go well, so well with everything. Like such different flavors. That one's like this saucy, kind of like thick, decadent thing. This is a, a seafood broth. Couldn't be more different than, than each other, but I, as far as I can tell, same noodles, same great flavor. It just blends so well. Absolutely delicious. For more absolutely delicious things, we're making a final stop at our favorite grocery store, H Mart, a Korean grocery chain we have been missing since we left our home in LA almost a year ago to travel full time. We loved getting a taste of Korean culture in the capital of the USA today. It is a great reminder of the fact that part of what makes this nation great is its influence from cultures all over the world. Thank you so much for joining us for this mad adventure. Please like and subscribe. Join us next week. And until then, live your own mad adventure. What is it? Isn't that the question? It's delicious. Sweet.